I hope everybody's had a wonderful Cinegear. This is actually my third year doing a panel uh, in this room at Cinegear in a row, which is pretty exciting for me. My name is Eldin Nordia. I am the uh, Senior Product Information Manager for uh, Sony uh, camera, uh, Cameras and Camcorders. I'm based out of San Diego. And um, you know our primary focus is, you know we have Action Cam, Handy Cam, but the alpha system of cameras. And we're pretty excited <clears throat> because this is a presentation, it's going to be a panel discussion with some folks who I'll introduce in a second, uh, who shot what we think is the full length, uh, the first full length feature film that has been shot in an A7 series camera, shot in the A7R Mark II. And uh, we're going to go through quite a few uh, different topics. And I think without any further ado, what I'd like to do is start off with a just a, the first clip uh, that we like to show from uh, the movie. And it's called Three Days in August. And uh, this is a uh, dance scene. So let's have a look at this. of the film, uh, Jonathan Brownlee is unavailable to join us and he'll actually explain in a little video clip uh, in a little while. Uh, it's actually his 50th birthday tomorrow and his son is graduate. sorry, his 50th birthday today and his son is graduating tomorrow. So he was kind enough to uh, let us show some clips and uh, be at the uh, panel without him. But uh, to my left, uh, we have Jeff Bullen. He is not only a Sony artisan of imagery, but he's also the producer of the film. Uh, he's been a artisan for probably four years now and uh, worked on a few features. And this is the first uh, producer title, I think, that you've had on a full feature, right? Correct. Great. So Jeff Berlin. And then to his left, we have Mungani Mulambo. Uh, Mungani is actually uh, up and coming. I think you've been in the industry about three years now and you've done several uh, you know, uh, music videos and uh, adverts, and this is your first length feature film that you've DP'd the entire film. So uh, really a great accomplishment, and uh, we're really excited because not only for, first for him doing a feature film, but first on the A7 series. And then Jem Oskalinci. Very good. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jem is a colorist at Alter Ego, and Alter Ego is uh, the, the color house that actually... Uh, did the, the color correcting for uh, Mad Max, the, the, the recent film. So really uh, a great place to be working. And uh, although Jim didn't work on that particular film, he has worked on a, a number of others, including The Wave, which I was mentioning now, which is um, the first Aces movie that was shown in... In Norway. In Norway, Yeah, it was right? graded in Aces. Great, graded, yeah. There we go. So um, I think a really esteemed panel. Um, and I think without any further ado, we're going to get into uh, the Q&A portion of this. What was the genesis of this film? Where did it come from? How did it come about? Um, I think it's part of an important step that a lot of people miss when we're going to uh, doing a panel discussion because we come in and um, how do we get where we are? So let's have a look at how we got where we are. Hi, I'm Jonathan Brownlee, and I'm the director and producer of Three Days in August. I'm sorry I can't be with you today in Los Angeles at Cinegear, but today is my 50th birthday, and tomorrow is my son's high school graduation, so I was sort of double booked this weekend. But I know the folks at Sony, Jeff Berlin, Bangani Malambo, and Jem Ozalicki will be able to handle any questions you might have on the panel discussion. So three days in August started with an international screenwriting competition. Uh, we received 200 submissions from 26 countries around the world. Ultimately, we chose a great script from Chad Berry and David Longlinay. I sat down with Chad and David in over four weeks, did a complete rewrite of the script, and we were ready to shoot the film in October. Uh, we already had a production budget in place, $200,000, which doesn't sound like a lot. 
It's not. Um, and we knew that we had an April 19th world premiere at Dallas International Film Festival, as well as a guaranteed limited national theatrical release from our partners at Studio Movie Grill. So we had a great package in place, great story to tell, great script to shoot. All right, great. So um, really interesting how a film comes about. And as you can uh, tell, there was a lot of things lined up for this film. Um, I don't know, Jeff, I know you had a couple of uh, discussions with Jonathan Pryor. I don't know if you have anything that you wanted to add there while I line up the next clip. Um, as you'll see a sec in a second in the, in the next clip from Jonathan, um, he called me about uh, another project that he was working on. And we were discussing cameras on that. And I don't want to get too far ahead. Do you want to just? I just also wanted to state that uh, we're not, you know, everything was shot in 4K, um, and we're not pre presenting in 4K here. So this is not an accurate representation of what the final product looks like. It actually looks a lot better. But the question that we had is: now that you've now that you've uh, got this film in hand, it's been selected. You have a uh, a roadmap of what's going to happen with this film. Um, how did you come about selecting Sony cameras and why specifically would you select the A7 series? So let's hear from Jonathan first. Um, now it was, came time to you know, pick gear, what platform are we gonna shoot this on? So um, my go-to guy is Jeff Berlin and I've shot films uh, and other projects. Uh, last feature, Occupy Texas, I shot on the F55, worked great. Um, and I was actually shooting um, a documentary called Fathom on the FS7, which I love. I love that camera. So I called Jeff and I said, you know, would that camera be appropriate for this? Or what else was Sony working on that maybe we should think about? And he talked a lot about the Alpha bodies. I own an A7S and a Shogun, so I understand that combination together and I've shot, you know, great pictures with that. Okay, so Jeff, I know that you obviously had a lot of conversations going into this with uh, Jonathan. Um, could you tell us a little bit how the conversation evolved and, and then what role you had in that? So Jonathan, like I was just saying, drop, dropped me a line and we started talking about different camera options for this project. And, you know, I've been working on the Sony Alpha cameras on a bunch of different projects for the, since it came out, really, as an artisan. Um, you know, I had access to that camera right, right out of the, right off the, you know, off the boat, really. And, um, you know, I did a lot of, you know, especially with the A7S, when that came out, that was really transformative for, for the convergence of video and stills in, in one body, 12 megapixel, great low light, an amazing, you know, direct pixel readout, you know, the quality of video signal and S-Log. I mean, there's a lot of great features in that camera. So I, and, and then, you know, over the couple of years that I've worked with that camera, I have experience also uh, taking that footage to a post house that I work with in Burbank, and so I know what you could do with a full color grade shooting with that camera in S-Log with the dynamic range and the exposure latitude and the color space and all what we could do. So I felt very comfortable saying to Jonathan, you know, I think the A7S or Alpha Body, you know, that, that camera is, you know, really something that we should consider. And um, so yeah. I went to Eldine and I dropped Eldine a line and um, I said, hey, you know, this is really an interesting project. It's funded. The money is in place. They have a distribution deal already in place. I mean, this is really happening. This is a legit project, and I'd like to support it. And um, so I, I said, you know, I think we should just take like six A7Ss down there, and you know, we'll, we'll get into the other support gear that. that yeah, he never that, asked for one. It's like, yeah, having no. an issue, we we want six. And. Um, and so I called Aldine, I'm like, I want six A7Ss, this is the dates, you know, this is a really cool project. I sent them a bunch of information about it, some press releases, all kinds of stuff, and then... Yeah, so, you know, I get this call from Jeff, and I'm sitting there in my office. In the meantime, what's running in the back of my mind is the day before, uh, we just had a uh, video conference with Japan, and they said, hey, we've got a new camera coming for you, it's A7R Mark II. And uh, if anybody knows uh, Sony, you know, we, we try and control leaks extremely closely, so there's like four or five people in the entire United States who actually knows this camera coming and, you know, we're threatened by death if we mention anything about it. And I'm sitting there nodding at my desk going, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, A7S is great. Yeah, we'll, we'll support you, we'll support you. Meanwhile, I put down the phone and I say to my colleague, Mark, wow, here's a great opportunity. A7R is coming. This is, this is the way to kick it off. This is the way to go. So we actually scrambled with uh, Japan and we got the first couple of cameras that came off the production line. 
um, which well, was literally two. I mean, I came down, I drove down to the Sony headquarters down in San Diego, and I was like, okay, this is what it's all about. This is the project I wanted. To, it was an important project, and I wanted FaceTime. I didn't want to just talk over the phone and be like, you know, like, let's, ha let's see how we can do this. So I went in there, and I physically was like, we got to do this. This is really, really cool. And I'm saying, you know, I'm sitting there in front of, you know, marketing team and a bunch of the product managers, and I'm like, A7S, 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 and they're all sitting there. Oh, yeah, we're nodding. Yes, sure. A7S is going to be, yeah, meanwhile. So we, we got two cameras. We got the, uh, um, a pre-production model because that was the only amount of cameras that we actually could get our hands on straight out, uh, out of Japan and uh, sent the three cameras off and uh, uh, they had to make do with three and uh, then, you know, production started. So, and, you know, we should yeah. specify too that the, the premise was always to uh, export 4K into the Atomus Shogun. Yeah, so, yeah, the, and, and we, we've got a pretty good relationship with uh, Atomus. So, you know, obviously it's a very good uh, combination. You know, the A7 shoots uh, internal, it'll do 4K XAVCS, um, you know, 2430p. 420 at 8 bit, but external you get 422 and it's uncompressed. So, whatever your, uh, your recorder is set to, and I believe you guys were shooting at ProRes? We were shooting at yeah. ProRes. Right. So, you know, you get, you get a massive amount of data coming through that camera. So, and it turned out actually that the A7R2 was the perfect camera because of the way the sensor uh, reads data when it's in a Super 35 crop mode. Right, so and, and that, you know, what you're talking about is the lens, yeah. our lens package right. too. So no, no, no uh, line skipping or pixel binning when you're in the Super 35 crop, um, which gives you an extremely clean uh, image. And you know, obviously, if you're using Super 35 uh, lenses uh, or PL mount lenses, then it really works. So that actually brings me to my next question: is um, how did you guys go about selecting the lenses, and what lenses did you select?